Coming up, I build a runaway mine train inside of this mountain range. I also build a fully automatic mine shaft elevator, capture a canary and build a lava farm too. Let's create. Last time I built this chocolate factory that produces hot cocoa and chocolate pie as part of a quest to build a mining town in these mountains. So today I'm going to be extending the mine shaft, making a big old minecart track and having some fun with minecarts. But not this type of minecart, that's way too small. I'm talking about these kind of minecarts, which are substantially larger. But they need to be this large in order for one of them at least to have some controls so that they can be fully automated around the mine shaft collecting goods and bringing them to the surface now of course as part of this mine we do want a big old tunnel ball that's going to dig down vertically and create a proper mine shaft with an elevator but i also want the minecart track to squirrel around through these caves and go in all sorts of directions with all sorts of different rooms and broken down bits of the mine where it's going to be producing all sorts of different things like iron and cobblestone and andesite and gold and zinc. So I've got a whole bunch of work ahead of me digging out this mine shaft so that I can lay some track down and get these minecarts doing some very interesting and exciting things. Ah, nearly ended up in those crushing wheels again. But before I get carried away actually digging out the mine shafts, I'm going to need to build some track so I know exactly where to dig them. And in order to make track, I'm going to need an absolute ton of dark oak, which I just happen to have an absolute ton of. And I need to turn every single one of these into slabs. And these slabs are going to go inside of this deploying machine setup I've got here and I need to remove this deployer altogether because instead of a deployer that's going to need a press so now I can put all of these slabs into here and now I need an absolute load of iron nuggets and I've got one but I do have a whole bunch of iron but this iron is no good to me I need more iron which means flying back over to Misty Shores to my lighthouse where a whole ton of iron nuggets awaits me and now I've got loads of iron nuggets I just need to put them all in these barrels so now that this is working we should start accumulating a whole bunch of track in here and i can use this to start planning out my little minecart route as far as I'm going for now. We've got a big old steep slope here, not that you can see it very well, but if I go into free cam and go into the wall, you can see we've got a bit of a windy track coming all the way down from the top, doing all sorts of twisty turny stuff and then coming all the way down to this point here. And if I look at the map, we are pretty much slap bang in the center of our area. So that's the reason I've stopped here, because I actually want to have an elevator shaft running down somewhere around about there that I can go up and down in to get up to the various different levels. And that's going to be going right bang in the center of this area around here. Oh, geez, we've got these guys again. And I want that minecart track to actually reach up with the elevator on various points on this journey. So, yeah, I kind of need to do that bit first. Now, as you can see, I haven't actually dug out hardly anything around the track. Ah, although I've got bits I can fall through, apparently. And that's because we're going to be using a train to dig out the area around this, although we'll have to be a little bit careful because we've got pipes and things quite close to the track. And then once it's all dug out via that train, I'll be able to come and dirty it up and rough it all up a little bit like what we've got, oh, if I can squeeze through going on here but before we do any of that i better go and get this elevator shaft in place so we've actually got a way of getting up and down oh good they've gone so in order to dig a big old hole in the ground for a big old elevator shaft we're going to need to use a whole bunch of mechanical drills and the hole itself doesn't need to be massive but it does need to be big enough to get an elevator shaft down and decorate around the edges as well so i think maybe a seven by seven should do it and there we go on this we're going to need a whole bunch of storage because this is going to be picking up a whole bunch of stuff as it digs down all the way to the bottom of the world and then all i need to do is glue it all together now all i need to do is stick on a rope pulley which is going to be powering this thing going up and down and then i need to attach it to some power and we've got power in our chocolate factory so i think a little temporary power line coming from in here somewhere this isn't janky at all it's perfectly acceptable actually thinking about this for the elevator we're going to need power as well so i think a more permanent power solution might be a better idea than just having this temporary mess across the ground in which case all i need to do is line up with the power that's going in there dig down a couple of blocks so we don't make a mess of my nice area underneath there here we go and just steal a little bit of this power and with a couple of bits of chain drive we've now got power but i'm not ready i know i'm not ready yet stop cheeky mining drill okay now i'm ready 
Jeez, what did you do? I just wanted to make sure everything in there was still going the right way around because we've put a gearbox in the power line and it's fine. So first of all, let's get this going on maximum speed. Plug it in and off it goes. Oh, wow, that is a fast drill. One, two, three, let's go. And here it is. Now, how many of these chests are totally full? Nothing in there. Bit of cobble. Lots of cobble. Loads of cobble. Oh, and some diamonds as well. And a whole bunch of deep slates and deep darky looking things. Nice. So with that done, we can dismantle this thing then. Let's put in a temporary little safety platform so that I don't fall down the hole. And now I guess I just need to empty out all of these chests. And now that that's all cleared up, it's time to build an elevator. And for that, I'm going to need an elevator pulley, a whole bunch of redstone contacts and some contraption controls. And I'm going to need to build the actual elevator construction itself as well, which means we're going to need some new blocks that I've not used before. And I imagine these new blocks I'm going to be using quite a lot today, and they require blocks of iron. If you put blocks of iron into the stone cutter, you get riveted loco metal and you get eight for every iron block you get. That's a lot of metal and hopping back over to our starter area quickly and yet again heading back to Misty Shores underneath this workshop we got a big old die farm and with these dies we can turn the riveted loco metals into different colors of riveted loco metal and I quite like the gray ones but I really like the light gray ones so we're gonna have a bunch of those and we're also gonna have a bunch of the white ones as well because I like those too and we can change these into different types as well on the stone cutter so back over at the hole the elevator is gonna be three by three and the first thing we need are a couple of redstone contacts although they do need to be a block lower down and our first one needs to go here and that needs to connect to one directly opposite it just there on top of that i'm going to put some of this riveted metal stuff although i'm kind of tempted to have the floor made out of this industrial iron catwalk but then that means our redstone contacts going to be floating a block below this thing that might look a little bit weird so maybe we could have the front part of it as mesh and then the back part of it like that that could work i guess so we can see through the floor on the way down alternatively if we brought our redstone contact up a block we could have the mesh going around that and then use a copycat board on top of it to disguise it with i don't know something like that maybe that could work then i want some temporary blocks all the way around the outside of this thing like that and then i'm going to just put boards on the inside of all of these like this and these boards are going to be what we're using to create the cage and with a few more copycat boards we've now got a big old box with a ceiling inside as well and i would like to keep it so it's see-through so we can see through it but unfortunately these copycat boards when you look through them at certain angles the ones behind them sort of disappear and go a bit glitchy so around the bottom i think we'll have some of this riveted metal stuff and then we can either use some industrial iron grate blocks which might be a bit dark or some andesite grate blocks so that we maintain that mesh so that we can see through it as this thing's going up and down Although I don't think this would be very good for the ceiling because that needs to feel a little bit more solid. So I guess the ceiling's going to have to be made out of this loco metal stuff. I guess that makes sense. Although it's a bit of an ugly, flat, boring box, isn't it? And after a whole bunch of jiggery pokery with a whole bunch of different types of copycat boards and dark oak and all that sort of stuff and even a nice door, we now have an elevator. Of course, this is going to need some controls, so I guess we'll stick those down. We can't put them there. Why can I not put them there? All right, then fine. We'll get rid of that and we'll put them on there. No? Oh, because this is on the inside. Huh, that's fine. We'll just remove that and we'll put the controls there. Facing the wrong way around, of course. Try that again. There we go. That looks okay from the inside. How does it look from the outside? Doesn't really matter. Yeah, that's fine. Of course, we want a little light in here so that we can see as we're going down. And the last thing we're going to need to make this work, of course, is going to be this elevator pulley, which we can put at the top here. Although I'll probably have it a little bit higher up than that. So let's just throw in some temporary blocks, pop it on there. And then if we get power up to it and click on it, it will attach to this. Although this isn't anything yet because it needs gluing together. And I didn't bring any glue. One other thing I'd have quite liked to add it to this, on the inside will be railings but because i've put these boards on the inside and i can't put them outside because we've got this trim here i can't put them in sadly but i think that would have looked nice if we had railings going around the outside although we might get away with it anyway although there will be a bit of a gap how does that look from the outside 
Uh, maybe not too bad. Why did your voice go all high pitched then? Why did it go high pitched when you do your voice? I don't know. Shut up then. Yeah, I kind of like that. That kind of works. Doesn't feel quite as solid in here. In fact, <laughs> doesn't feel solid at all. But I like the handrail. The question is though, will it all glue together? There's only one way to find out. Glue all of that like that. We just need to get this block right at the top. So let's do that. There we go, we now have an elevator. So we just need to connect some power to our elevator pulley and I'm just gonna do that temporarily for now. So if I click on this elevator pulley now, it should just drop down and attach. No, it can't. Cannot attach more than one redstone contact to elevators. Oh, I connected this one, didn't I? Yeah, okay, that, that doesn't wanna be part of the contraption. Let's just replace that with one of those and do that then. Then if we assemble it, there we go, it's dropped down. Now it's an elevator and we should be able to put the redstone contact back in. There we go, now that's classed as an elevator contact so we should be able to go down to it. We can. <laughs> That's all we can do. We can't go anywhere else and now I can't get out. Oh, I can. If I put it up here instead, that should then be out of the way. There we go. The door should open when we get there. There we go. And now I can put the contact actually where I want it. So now when I press the button, it should line up perfectly with what we've done. It has. We've got our elevator in with its first floor. So what I've got to do now is decide what levels I want this elevator to go down to and put these redstone contacts at all those different levels down there. Oh, I've got a little bit of planning and poking about to do. And while I'm planning and poking around down there, why don't you plan to poke around that subscribe button and the like button as well? Because it really helps me out. Of course, the first level we're going to need our elevator at is probably going to be in line with this track. And I believe the hole's in that direction. And also, if we've come down all this steep slope on our minecart, we want to probably go up first so that it can reduce its speed before it gets around to the elevator. So first of all, let's just dig over to where the elevator is, which if we look on the map is in this direction. Ah, and here we are. And we're at level 35 here. So let's go down to level 30 and make life a little bit easier on ourselves. Nice round numbers and all that. Should do 32. Yeah, I should do 32. You're right. And we want to be around the front of the elevator roughly so that it's accessible to be getting on and off of. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is drop down a block, come over this way a little bit with some of those and pop down one of those, I think, about there, maybe a block further forward. Oh no, that is in the right spot there. And if I craft myself a button quickly and stick that on the back of there, I can actually call the elevator down to it. Although at the moment, the elevator's going at very slow speed because I haven't sped up the speed controller. So I guess I've got a long walk back to get to the top of it so that I can speed it up. Go faster, 160. Oh, and it has reached its destination. Good. Okay, so with the elevator being at this level here, we now need the minecart to meet up with it somehow or other. And I think if we come a big loop round to this side and come along here, maybe we could have like a little station at this point where all of this gravel is. And just dipping back to my test world quickly, in my head, I've been imagining this minecart having a driver and a controller in it and driving itself, but that would be a little bit weird. So I think we're going to have to, at some point today, design a train that's going to be pulling these things because I, yeah minecarts don't generally pull themselves do they now it'd be amazing if we could use one of these to pull the minecarts but i don't think that you can actually attach these to trains and pull them around but it might be a good way of us getting around for our own personal mode of transport in the mines but for the minecarts of course we're going to need an engine but we'll get to that later so now that we've got our minecart track all the way from the top of the mine all the way down to here, I think it might be a good idea to build some sort of contraption on it so that we can actually start digging out around this thing without me having to do it all manually. And that also gives me a good excuse to hop up in this elevator, which doesn't work. Why, do, why not work, mate? Hello? Huh. It says it's going, but it ain't going. I guess I'm taking the long way around again. Ah! It would appear that our power is overstressed. There we go. Maybe we can't have it on as fast as I thought we could. And now I need a station and some train casing. I haven't made any train casing at all this series yet, and it's quite an expensive thing to make. And that's because it requires sturdy sheet. And sturdy sheet requires powdered obsidian, which is crushing down obsidian. And then you've got to pour lava on it and press it a few times. So I guess I'm going to need a bunch of lava and a bunch of obsidian too. I've got 40 obsidian and I've got 17 buckets of lava. So we should be able to make a few. Because the good thing about crushing down obsidian is that when you crush it down there is a chance you actually get a piece of obsidian back again so there we go we got 14 obsidian back as well as the 20 powdered obsidian from the 20 pieces of obsidian i've put in and running it all through a few more times we've ended up with 52 powdered obsidian 
That's not bad from 20 pieces. Where am I going to build this squirty device that does la- Oh my goodness, I need lava tanks, I need- Oh jeez. Now I haven't got anywhere immediately round here that I can actually set all of this up, but because it's going to be something we'll be using regularly throughout this series, because obviously we're going to be building a whole bunch of trains, it makes sense to have it set up somewhere semi-permanently. And because we've now got this track that runs round this whole area, and off that track we're going to be having rooms with things going going on in them, it probably makes sense to start building or at least digging out one of those rooms now so that we can produce that in there. But where do I want it? Well, at this point in the track, there's already power running along here, so I guess it would make sense to build it somewhere near that. So I think I'm going to dig out a big old area in, in this direction, which I think... Oh yeah, that's, that's directly underneath this room. Mm, that might not be a good idea. In that case... We'll maybe dig over in this direction instead and build it in here. So I've dug out a big old room and I've given myself plenty of height because I think it would make sense to actually have a little lava farm in here, which is going to be very convenient and easy thing to do because my little minecart track goes straight through a dripstone area so we can get plenty of this. I've just got to walk all the way along. I need one of them handcart things, although I, it probably won't fit through the hole because it's not... Oh, jeez. Just down here. I just need to gather a few bits of this. Now for a lava farm. And we're going to need an absolute ton of iron and copper because we're going to need to make a whole bunch of cauldrons as well as a whole bunch of pipe. And the way this is going to work is basically we're going to have a whole bunch of pipes on the floor like this. All of these are going to have cauldrons on top. Then, of course, we need to leave an air gap for a piece of pointed dripstone and then we just have our dripstone over the top of all of this. You don't need to use dripstone. You just need the pointed dripstone. I know, and I don't know how to get pointed dripstone because I've only got dripstone. Please tell me I can craft it. I can't craft it. I have to go... Oh, I've got to go... Oh, jeez. Well, that could be a problem. Well, forgetting the pointed dripstone for now, then all we need to do is put some blocks to surround all of this so that our lava doesn't fall out once we put it on top and then get lose connection because my internet's playing up today. Stop it! And then once all of the blocks around the outside are in, of course, then all we need to do is pop in the lava. Now, I don't have enough to fill in this entire thing and they all do need to be lava sources. So we're going to start at the back and work our way forward and then we can top this up later on once we've actually started generating some lava and well, that's as many as I've got now at some point once we've got our pointed dripstone then these will start filling up with lava we'll put a pump on the front here and pump it all into a tank and then we got free lava forever I need to go and find some pointed dripstone and I really don't think there's going to be any down here where this Okram is because this is just part of create world generation putting dripstone next to Okram because that's how it goes but there's never any pointed dripstone so I need to find myself a dripstone cave and to find a dripstone cave I'm going to need a nature's company Compass, which is just a normal compass and then surrounded it all by logs and stuff. Logs and stuff? Yep, yeah, logs and stuff, mate. Okay, dripstone cave, start search. Oh, it's only 550 blocks away, that's not too bad. And in order to make life nice and easy for us, we can add in a waypoint to our map. And now I don't need the compass, I just need to head towards wherever that is. That way. Ooh, a new area that I haven't seen before. Wow, that's nice water. Look how bright that water is. It's beautiful. Anyway, oh, look at the gradient. Anyway, I haven't got any cherry wood or trees yet. Anyway, the dripstone caves are just down here, bro. Here we go. Let's come here and just dig down and hope for the best. What could possibly go wrong? Aha, dripstone. This is good news. Ah, good job I got a jetpack. Oh, and a look at all of the pointy stuff. It's all mine, I tell you, mine. Why this is not craftable, I will never know. I guess it's supposed to have, like, generated over millions of years, which is how it actually works in real life. But still, you should be able to craft it. Got stone cutters. I could craft those out of stone, out of drip stone, stone on a stone cutter in real life. What did he say? Easy, mate. It's like sharpening a stick. Just got to make it all pointy. But no. You've got my drip stone. You thief! I come here to steal that. Is that a canary? That's a can it is. All mine shafts need canaries. I can't believe it's got canary right, my canary. Then I'll be able to tell if the mine shaft is dangerous because you'll be dead. That's how canaries work, mate. Goats I can understand on top of a mountain. Snails, however. I'm not a hundred percent sure that's quite right. Don't fly away. Where'd you go? You flew away! I turn my back for one second, my canary wanders off. Did you somehow get behind the wall? 
You, how did you get there? Glitching, cheating canary. Right, well, don't you be glitching and cheating out of this special little box that I made you. Stay. If you would like to give this canary a name, then don't forget to leave a comment. Anyway, back to our dripstone system. We have everything we need now to get this thing working. So I'm just going to place all of the pointed dripstone along the bottom of these. And over time, these should now start filling in these cauldrons full of lava. So of course, we're going to need a pump and we're going to need a big old tank to store all of that lava in. And we're going to need power to this pump, which is just the case of putting a cog on there, running a little bit of shaft down the side with a couple of gearboxes and whatnot to get it going in the direction that I need it. And then I'm just going to connect it to this power up here. Plug it in and boom, we're pumping. Nothing because it's none of it's got lava in yet. And I guess I'm going to have to wait a while. And while I'm waiting for that lava to start coming through, I guess I should probably start building our sturdy sheet processing system. Sheep? No, sheet, mate. You should be more clear with your words. You should be more clear with your... For this, we just need a spout and a couple of presses on top of a conveyor. Obviously, that spout's going to need lava in it, which we can do by attaching that pump to that pipe there we'll put a couple of these boxes here with a barrel for our input and a barrel for our output a barrel a barrel right barrel a barrel we'll stick an andesite funnel on there and one on there bit of chain drive sticking out of there like that and one going down like that bit of shaft underneath it another bit of chain drive going there and one on there like that cog up here like this with a bit of chain drive going there like that another cog up here like this with the gearbox plugged into that oh we've already got lava in there oh wow we're already getting lava huh nice and then just the gearbox there and it's going the wrong way of course it is why would it go the right way that would be too convenient okay fine get rid of that extend the belt that way stick that there stick the shaft in there and then just two more gearboxes and boom our belt's going the right way so all we need to do now is stick our powdered obsidian in there and that should get squirted and stamped and turn into sturdy sheet amazing oh, we're getting through things today peeps now with this sturdy sheet all i need to do is put down some brass casing give it a bit of a click and now we have reached the logistical age and a station, or well, two train stations, is just a train casing and a compass. Oh, all the compasses I've had to make today, mate. Two stations, please. And that means I can put that there and stick that down there, click on it and click create new train and just stick a bogey there. So first things first, we're going to need a seat. Then we need some train controls, which is even more of this train casing. And then we just need our glue and a whole bunch of mechanical drills. Oh, and storage. I've got storage on me. That's fine. That should be everything I, we need, I think, maybe, possibly. Let's slap our seat on there we'll put our controls on there and let's remove the seat again because i want it a block higher so i can see where i'm going and then let's just stick on a whole bunch of mechanical drills and we want this thing to probably be about five wide by i guess maybe five high now there's a couple of important things to do here first of all we want some storage on this thing to actually be able to pick up the blocks that it's going to be breaking and I don't know if one barrel's going to be enough I might stick on a couple of extra barrels at the front just so we've got plenty and the other thing I want are some more controls and I don't mean these types of controls I mean the type that we've got in our elevator these ones because with these controls which i'm just going to stick on there we can actually stick a drill into that there and that means we can turn off these drills if we don't want to use them for instance when we go past things that are a little bit delicate that require doing by hand so let's get it all glued together that should just about do it i think we'll call this tunnel maker done we have a train so if i hop on here now sit on there and control this train i can turn off and on the drills if i need to now when i oh now when I drive it, the drills will turn. Although it, I'm sure it should zoom out further than this. I can't I can't see anything. I also gotta be a little bit careful I don't kill all of my donkeys and my llamas. I'm gonna have to move guys, you're in the way of my train. It's not a train! no carriages. You know what I mean. You're not a real train enthusiast at all, are you? No. How dare you play create if you're not a hundred percent into trains constantly all the time forever? Sorry, babe. It'd be really nice if I could see where I was going. I should be able to have a longer view away from it than this, but it doesn't appear to be working. Configure, client settings, trains. Ah, mounted zoom multiplier. There we go. Confirm, did nothing. Might not work. Well, I fixed it, but I think I might have set it a bit too far. Uh, hmm. Turns out the default is best after all. Allow me to see the front of the train and the back in third person. And it was either the camera utils mod or the orthographic view mod that was conflicting. I'm not sure which. 
I just disabled them both. It is time to start chewing through these walls, making a big old mess as we go through our new mine shaft. And it turns out I wasn't quite as careful as I thought I was being. I've just run straight through these pipes. I've also run through my storage system connection which is not ideal. And I ran through the power that connects the rest of the area to this area as well. But there we go. That's all fixed now. We've got a nice big old tunnel that we can end up decorating in here. And we've now got direct access to our wood room as well, by the looks of things. So I'm going to go up and down this thing a couple of times, digging it out. And no doubt I'll have to come down a couple more times in order to widen certain bits up and change bits and obviously put floors in and things like that. So it's probably montage replay thing time. I can't see a thing. Pipe in my face. Well, this replay didn't quite work out. I've no idea what happened. It doesn't matter what settings I change, but the tunnel ball's just going to glitch the whole way through. I look like I'm standing rather than sitting down, and the whole thing's a mess, really. So let's just skip to the end and just pretend it was a nice time lapse, shall we? I mean, I suppose I could do it like this. <laughs> But that'd take ages. Okay, the drilling machine has finished doing the drilling passes, which means I can now create one of these and go for a little journey down the mine. And hopefully we won't have any issues getting stuck in blocks or anything like that. And you should be able to see it's relatively open now. There's a few bits of tidying up to do, a whole bunch of decorating to make it look like a mine shaft. But we got this really nice little journey that goes round and round and round in all sorts of different directions with up bits and down bits, nice big old steep hills swooping bends, blocks in the way, and a big old hill to go down, which will take us to the station. Oh, apparently dropped me off here while it carries on. And I'm going to leave that there for a minute because now I'm going to call the elevator down, hopefully. Is it going to work this time? It is. Here it comes. Oh, that's, that looks awful. I don't like it. And then we're going to make some modifications to our tunneling machine. First of all, we need to disassemble it. And I'm going to leave the top half of the drills on there, but I'm going to take this bottom two layers off and I'm going to replace them with these mechanical rollers. And what these are going to do, although actually I need to take this layer off as well so I can access the top, is these are going to actually plot in cobblestone on the ground layer as like a temporary base for us to work with and it'll also help smooth out all of the blocks around the track. Now I need this on clear blocks and pave. We need to put these back in so it all actually does still stay glued together and these should already be glued together because the glue was already there. So if I reassemble the train again, I should with a bit of luck be able to drive that backwards and forwards and there you go. You can see underneath the train it's just placing cobblestone. So now I've just got to go all the way down again placing cobble under the tracks and then that should be this mine shaft up well barely started oh, geez this is going to be a lot of work to do i made an awfully long track and as you can see from the track behind me the advantage of using cobblestone is it can actually place down slab variants which means it can keep in line with the actual track itself not leaving massive gaps underneath it making the track actually look like it is in the floor it ate my machine my little hand I, what it ate it oh i, I picked it up that's okay Right, anyway, now we've gone all this way, I'm going to do exactly the same thing going back, but a whole bunch more slowly this time, just to make sure it finishes off anything that it missed on the way down here. So now that all of that's done and we're starting to get some sort of shape of a mine shaft, I would suggest that I need to start decorating it and putting in the beams and roughing up the edges and things like that, but there's something else I need to do first. And for you guys, I'm imagining this is the bit you've all been waiting for. That's right, I'm going to just sit here and tediously empty out my inventory and sort all of these boxes out for your viewing pleasure. You're well, where's the my mud go? It goes in there. Yep, some of that. This stuff goes in there, I think. We've got some of those. I'm joking, I'm gonna build a train! Or an engine or whatever. I don't know. Just train engine thing. Jeez. You still sorting out your inventory? Yeah, but it needs doing, mate. Well you could cut. Just cut the video. Please cut the video. Now, in order to make a train, of course, we're going to need an engine and at least one carriage. And at the moment, I've only got one train case in and that's not enough. So I suppose we should head down to our lava room, see how much lava we've got now. Ooh, quite a bit. Which means all of my powdered obsidian has been through and been turned into sturdy sheet. And I suppose I could speed this entire process up now. I put it in all of my empty buckets in there. They should get filled with lava and then I can top up the rest of this. I think this is the last one. There we go, we've got a full thing of lava now, which means this lava farm should increase its speed significantly. Okay then, I've extended the track, I've put down another station, and our little steam engine is going to have, I guess, those sorts of wheels. Although with the steam and rails create add-on, 
I can actually pick a whole bunch of different types of wheels. Got single axles, double axles, triple axles. Oh, that, ah, wow. What? That's a lot of wheels. Probably a bit big for what I need though. I think something like that will do for the engine wheels and then for the trucks. I'm going to be using these freight wheels and I guess we probably want these spaced out around about that far apart. But until I started building everything, I don't really know. Now I know the design for the trucks that I'm going to be using because I've already got those in my creative test world. But I have no idea what the design for our little steam train is going to be. Although I do think it should mainly be black because it's going to be in a dusty old coal mine and I think that makes most sense. However, before I start building the train, I need to go to the nether because I want to make some brass wrap local metal boilers, which means I need blaze rods. And at the moment, I've only got two. And now that I've got my jetpack, going to the nether should be a whole bunch easier. So here we go. Let's head back to our spawn house, nip out the back door, nip into the nether, go and kill some blazes. Let's do this. And here we are, that took absolutely no time at all. But I think I'll just stand here, fly between these two spawners and just take on any blazes that pop up. What are those? Eyeball blocks? Ooh. And there we go, four train hulls. But how big are they? Yeah, they're not too big at all. They're a nice size. Well, actually, maybe they're a bit big. Jeez, they're massive compared to that. What a fancy looking little mine train. I love it. And of course it needs a name because at the moment it is just called mine train. But let's take it for a spin and see if it actually fits down the tunnels we've made. I think I might have to get my tunneling machine out and make these holes a little bit bigger because this is a lot bigger than I expected it to be. Well, it looks like we're fitting at the minute. Kinda, sort of, yeah, we're underneath. We are fitting in the hole. What about the trucks? The trucks are fitting as well. I mean, we haven't got much room for supports and things at the side, and we do crash into a few of those pipes and things, but we can sort all of that out. But otherwise, this looks like it fits really well, and it's fast too. Go down the steep hill. All the way down, over the lumps and bumps. Oh no, not again! 